Welcome to Essentials of Acute Care. I am Dr. Sunil Garg and today I am going to discuss the use of inotropes and vasopressors in critical care. By definition, vasopressors are the agent which induces vasoconstriction and thereby they elevate the mean arterial pressure. While inotropes are the agent which increases cardiac contactility, thereby they increase the cardiac output. Many drugs have properties of both inotropes and vasopressors. Only few controlled clinical trials have directly compared these agents or documented improved outcome due to their use. Thus, the way these agents are commonly used largely reflect expert opinion, animal data, and the use of the surrogate endpoints such as tissue oxygenation as a proxy for decreased morbidity and mortality. These agents are of mainly two types, adrenergic agents and non-adrenergic agents. They work through different receptors. Alpha-1 adrenergic receptor is present in the vascular walls and it induces vasoconstriction. Beta-1 adrenergic agents is present in the heart and it increases the inotropy and chronotropy of the heart. Beta-2 adrenergic agent is present in the vessel wall and it causes vasodilation. Other receptor types are dopamine receptor and angiotensin receptor. What are the indication of these agents? These agents should be used when there is presence of end organ dysfunction due to hypoperfusion and it is coupled with hypotension. Hypotension is defined as decrease of the systolic blood pressure by more than 30 from the baseline and mean arterial pressure less than 60. It is important to remember that hypovolemia should be corrected prior to administration of these therapies. To use these drugs effectively and safely, one must understand few fundamental concepts regarding their use. One drug often acts on multiple receptors. In fact, most of the adrenergic agents act on multiple receptors. Like in case of dobutamine, it acts on both beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. Dose response curve, one drug acts on different receptors in dose-dependent manner. Like in case of dopamine, it acts on different receptors in different dosage. Direct versus reflex action, one drug may act by both direct action on receptors and reflex action triggered by pharmacological response. Like in case of norepinephrine, by alpha-1 action, it induces vasoconstriction and increases mean arterial pressure. By beta-1 action, it increases heart rate and causes tachycardia. But by reflex action, since blood pressure is increased, it causes bradycardia, so the ultimate effect on the heart rate remains unchanged. The practical issues surrounding their use includes adequate intravascular volume resuscitation should be done prior to administration of these agents. The choice of initial agent should be based upon suspected underlying etiology of shock. Since these medications are titrable medication, Titration should be done to achieve effective blood pressure or end organ perfusion. If a maximal dose of a first agent are ineffective, then a second drug should be added to the first agent. They can be administered through appropriately positioned peripheral venous catheter initially. Central venous catheter should be used if high doses are required, multiple agents are given, or patient continue to require these agents for a long time. Central venous catheter is also required when appropriate peripheral venous catheter is not available. The bioavailability of subcutaneously administered medications can be reduced during therapy with vasopressor agents, especially heparin and insulin. Now we will understand these agents one by one. Norepinephrine, it acts on alpha-1 and beta-1 receptors. By alpha-1 action, it causes vasoconstriction and by beta-1 action, it causes modest increase in the cardiac output, so the ultimate effect is increase in the mean arterial pressure. Heart rate remains stable or decreases slightly and it is preferred for septic shock. Now coming to phenylephrine, this drug has alpha action similar to norepinephrine, so it causes vasoconstriction and increases the mean arterial pressure. This drug is useful when hypotension is associated with vasodilation as it occurs in cases of hyperdynamic sepsis, neurogenic shock and when hypotension is associated with anesthesia. It is reserved for patients when norepinephrine is contraindicated due to arrhythmias 
or who have failed other therapies. This drug is also not given when vasoconstriction is present or patient has cardiac dysfunction. Epinephrine has potent beta-1 and moderate beta-2 and alpha-1 adrenergic activity. In low dosage, it increases the cardiac output. Systemic vascular resistance either decreases or remains unchanged, so the ultimate effect on mean arterial pressure is variable. In high dosage, it increases cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance both. Regarding the utility of epinephrine, it includes anaphylactic shock as a second line agent in septic shock and for the management of the hypertension following coronary artery bypass surgery. Disadvantage of this medication include dysrhythmias and splenic vasoconstriction. Dopamine is second line alternative to norepinephrine in patients with the relative or absolute bradycardia and low risk of tachyarrhythmias. It acts on different receptors in different doses and dose dependent effect of dopamine means changing the dose of drug is akin to switching vasopressors. Usual dose range of dopamine is 2 to 20 microgram per kg and it should be started at 2 to 5 microgram and the dose should be titrated to a desired physiological effect. Now coming to dobutamine, dobutamine is a inodilator means it acts both as a inotropic agent and vasodilator. Net effect is increase in the cardiac output with decrease in the systemic vascular resistance so the ultimate effect on the blood pressure is either no change or there is a small reduction in the blood pressure. The most frequent use of the dobutamine includes severe medically refractory heart failure and cardiogenic shock patient. Isoprotenol is mainly inotropic and chronotropic agent and it is similar to dobutamine. But its beta 2 action is more pronounced so it causes decrease in the blood pressure and it is Useful only when hypotension is due to the bradycardia. Vasopressin is non adrenergic agent and it is primarily used as a second line agent in refractory vasodilatory shock. Doses higher than 0.04 unit per minute are generally avoided. The effect of milrinone is similar to those of dobutamine but it has lower incidence of dysrhythmias. It is most often used to treat patients with the impaired cardiac function and medically refractory heart failure as we do with the dobutamine. The vasodilatory property of milrinone limits its use in the hypotensive patients. Synthetic angiotensin 2 is newer agent and it acts as vasopressor through angiotensin receptors. In terms of contraindication, limitations and interaction, dopamine should not be used in patients of cardiogenic shock Rather, norepinephrine should be preferred in such patients. The adrenergic vasopressors should not be used in patients of pheochromocytoma, and dobutamine is contraindicated in patients of idiopathic hypertrophic subaortic stenosis. Patients, those who are on monoamine oxidase inhibitors, are extremely sensitive to vasopressors, and these patients require much lower dosage of vasopressors. Regarding complications of these agents, it includes excessive vasoconstriction leading to inadequate perfusion and it commonly occurs in those patients who have inadequate cardiac output or those who have inadequate volume resuscitation. Other complications include dysrhythmias, myocardial ischemia and skin necrosis due to peripheral extravasation. Hyperglycemia can also occur because of the inhibition of the insulin secretion. Regarding controversies surrounding their use, there is no data to support routine use of low-dose dopamine to either prevent or treat acute renal failure. There is no well-established maximum dose for norepinephrine. And the routine administration of vasopressors or inotropes to improve cardiac output or oxygen delivery to supranormal level is not recommended. In terms of choice of agent, dobutamine should be used for cardiogenic shock when there is no significant hypotension. Norepinephrine should be used for septic shock. Norepinephrine should be used for cardiogenic shock when there is hypotension. And epinephrine should be used for anaphylactic shock. To sum up, alpha-1 receptor stimulation causes vasoconstriction. Beta-1 stimulation causes inotropic and chronotropic action and beta-2 stimulation causes vasodilation. 
the indication for these agents includes mean arterial pressure less than 60 or hole in the systolic blood pressure more than 30 from baseline if they are associated with the end organ dysfunction due to hypoperfusion. Here it is important to understand that merely low blood pressure is not an indication for starting or initiating these agents if it is not associated with the end organ dysfunction. Hypovolemia should be corrected prior to initiation or administration of this therapy for maximal efficacy. And the choice of the agent depends upon suspected underlying etiology of shock. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you like this video. If you have any feedback, suggestion or comments, please write down in the comment section box. And please subscribe to this channel. And once again, thanks for watching the video.